In the late 1950s, a select committee headed by Alan Bullock chose the renowned Danish architect Arne Jacobsen to design the new college buildings for St. Catharines. The result being arguably Jacobsen's most beautiful and prolific building. Bullock had been the driving force in getting corporate funding for the project, but it was the university's surveyor, in essence the university's architect, Jack Lancaster, that was the essential link between Jacobsen and the St. Catharines Committee. I met Jacobsen when he first came over, and I think it was the end of 1958, it may have been 1950, beginning of 59, when he came over to see Oxford for the first time. He had no conception of what an Oxford college was, uh, so he was taken by Alan Bullock, who was the, uh, to be appointed the master of the college, to see New College. That was very important, I think, for Jacobson to understand what was expected, as it were, you know, what constitute an Oxford College. I think it would have been a very much more difficult job to have got it approved if it hadn't conformed in some way with what people's idea of a college was. He was a very, he was a, he was a very charismatic presence, uh, and he was, uh, Although he was rather a shy man, he was very forceful in his views. I don't think he thought of himself as being an iconoclast or radical in that sense. I think he wanted to do what he did, but in, but in the context of, of Oxford. Arne Jacobsen was a total designer architect that insisted on having complete control over every aspect of the project. For him, the design of every element of a building had to be harmonious. He was obsessive about every single detail. The height of the cedars, the colour schemes used throughout, the textiles, the type of fish used in the pond, and of course the furniture and lighting. In St Catharines we get Jacobson's entire design portfolio. Although the theory of integrated design had been used throughout history with Kent, Adam, Pugin and Morris, Jacobson's success with St. Catharines can be noted as an uber-rare event in modern English architecture. Perhaps the slogan created by Ernesto Rogers, one of Jacobson's great influences, from the spoon to the town, best captures the direction he took. Impressed with the traditions he saw in Oxford architecture, his plan can be seen as a modern interpretation of the Oxbridge Quad. Another obsession, proportion. He notes, Proportions are what make the old Greek temples classic in their beauty. They're like huge blocks from which the air has been literally hewn out between the columns. As if in balance to this stern perfectionist side, he loved to escape to nature and paint in watercolours. A place where anti-design and anti-aesthetics were the order. A place he couldn't control. This love of nature is in evidence in the gardens of St. Catharines. The choice of trees, hedges and the use of water in its reflective powers. The timeless brilliance of St. Catharines is perhaps easiest to see in the furnishings. With the exception of some limited pieces made by Gordon Russell, all the furniture was made by Fritz Hansen, and the lighting by Lewis Paulson. Nowhere is the beauty of the total design concept more evident than in the interior of the college. Throughout and in every single space, from the hinge to the door handle, every table, every chair, in the dining hall, every knife, fork, every spoon, all the lovely Lewis Paulson lamps. Some pieces are absolutely unique to St. Catharines, like the all-wood Oxford chair, that although made by Fritz Hansen in a similar form, was never faithfully remade in all wood.
As we see St. Catherine's today, it's a magnificent yet understated monument to modern architecture and design. It's a rare jewel where the vision of a great architect permeates every single aspect and detail. Now 50 years later, St. Cat's, the modern concept, fits very comfortably into the tapestry that's the history of Oxford.